I start anything, um, my title is pretty out there, so you might have questions, doubts, and I kind of wanted to address that. Um, I truthfully really struggled to find a title to this speech um, because I didn't know how to apply such a blanket generalization of humanity in the environment. Um, especially in my very biased view as an environmental science student, I do a lot for sustainability here. Um, it's definitely my passion, my calling. Um, so I encourage you not to generalize my speech here, but rather to take the time and space to consider your and your peers' relationship with nature. How do you actively interact with nature? How about passively? How do you reflect on the land beneath our feet? So now that I preface that, um, who am I? Well, I'm a senior here at UConn, um, and that means my freshman year began in 2019. Pretty normally, pre-pandemic, socially desperate, I was trying to test general chemistry, which I did, but it was not easy. Um, I once cried in the Northwest Dining Hall eating a big plate of dumplings. It was very hard. Um, and then the following spring 2020, students got news of a two week break because of something called the coronavirus. Um, I remember thinking, whatever. I moved back home getting to see my dog and my family, and I didn't return to UConn after those two weeks. It was much longer than two weeks. Um, we were all adjusting to this new format of holding class online. The social and academic isolation were an arsenal no students, no faculty have really ever addressed and felt. Um, and I used arsenal because it felt like a war zone. Um, do you remember trying to get toilet paper in April 2020? <laughs> I remember my mom and dad going to the store and like, oh no, what are we gonna do? It was a whole thing. Um, and I remember a certain thickness in the air. Um, and as also a mathematics major, I very much believe in the power of numbers and statistics. So I wanted to highlight some that give light to the pandemic. Research done by the Kaiser Family Foundation shows that prior to the pandemic in June of 2019, 11% of U.S. adults self-reported symptoms of anxiety and depression. Um, so about 1 in 10. In January 2021, very much in the middle of the pandemic, vaccines weren't out yet, this number rose to 41.1%. Um, that's a 30% increase. Three more people out of 10. Um, nearly half of the people in the United States living with above average anxiety. And to put that into a number, um, 136 million 79,000. That's a lot. Uh, and my experience isn't unique. There's a lot of people who suffer with anxiety, but I thought I would highlight mine for the purpose of this TED Talk. Um, so that summer of 2020, I was at home, and really there wasn't much more to that summer. I didn't go anywhere, I didn't see anyone. Um, I did what I had to to be safe. Um, but this was a particularly low time for me. Um, I was having regular panic attacks. I do have panic disorder in which for many evenings I was pacing around my room with a light on um, and I could not sit. I was just not doing that well. Um, it was one of the worst times of my life at this point. Um, consequently, I spent a lot of time though at my house, around my yard, I'm from Shelton, Connecticut, Fairfield. Um, it's somewhat rural. Um, so, I explored the land and I learned the spindly feel of the roots of my large towering oak trees, the acrid smell of the New England soil when my mom and I would plant our summer marigolds, um, and the ruffling sounds of the leaves of the summer storms with my open window. All these memories bring me immeasurable joy. They were an escape from my otherwise terrible mental state, and I can recall crying from, because of how touched I was by the land. The solace it gave me while my mental state was otherwise spiraling. I felt the panic of feelings from school, from the pandemic, from the approaching election in November, all melt in the summer sun. Um, there are many viable and useful methods developed by healthcare providers for dealing with anxiety disorders. There's medication, which I do take, therapy, changes in diet, um, the list goes on, but the tangible benefits of nature are so often overlooked. During the pandemic, because of this deadly airborne disease, there were not many safe activities. So a lot of people went outside because it was safe. Um, there are countless benefits to being outside, and a very applicable example I wanted to highlight to our university setting um, is a research done by the Journal of Environmental Psychology. Australian researchers asked students to engage in dull attention-draining tasks in which they had to press a computer key when certain numbers flashed on the screen. 
Um, students who looked at a flowering green room for 40 seconds midway performed significantly better than students who were looking at an urban landscape. Um, this conveys the importance of green space and stress management and cognitive function. So the lesson here is the only reason I passed my freshman year chemistry is because my classroom had a window at the Swan Lake. Um, but I want to slow down and highlight that it only takes 40 seconds of purposeful engagement with nature to feel the healing benefits. And this is very much a linear relationship. If you spend as little as 20 minutes a day with the earth, you can reduce feelings of stress, depression, anxiety, while at the same time increasing immune function, concentration, memory. It's both a mental and physical response. And I will always be a proponent of going outside and slowing down with nature. There is a really a special wonder when you can be with the land, but the reality is you do not even need your sight to benefit from this. Um, research done by Stephen Von Hedger shows that people who listen to sounds of nature, like crickets chirping and waves crashing, performed much better on cognitive tests than people who listen to urban landscapes like cities and cars driving by. Um, one last study I wanted to highlight here is um, it follows 900,000 residents born in Denmark between 1985 and 2003. Um, researchers found that children who lived in neighborhoods with an abundance of green spaces, parks, had a reduced risk of psychiatric disorders like substance abuse, depression, anxiety, mood disorders. And for those children who had less exposure to green spaces, much more urban environments, the risk of developing mental illness was 55% higher. Um, so that is a much higher chance of experiencing mental disorders. Nature's benefit, major benefits for human mental well-being are simply countless. This is why the pandemic is so interesting to me and why I wanted to talk about it. We were in this really unique time where people were spiraling mentally, but were also spending additional time outside, which as I've highlighted is objectively good for you. Um, research done by Pennsylvania State University shows that half of adults from across the United States now participate in outdoor recreation on at least a monthly basis, and about 20% were new to recreation during the pandemic. So one out of every five of you were going outside and doing a little bit more, which is fantastic. Um, since the pandemic, uh, the utility of nature, I don't always want to apply utility to nature, but for the purpose of this TED Talk, I will. The utility of nature in the sense of human wellness is so important. And Nature RX, an organization at UConn and other universities, is paving the way for the general public to be able to interact with nature with a keen focus on mental well-being. And I want to talk about this group at UConn. Dr. Cynthia Jones, Cindy, um, is faculty in the Ecology and Evolutionary Biology Department who studies plant morphology, anatomy, reflect, and how that reflects functional responses to the environment. In December of 2019, so I was a baby freshman, um, she was discussing the work of other similar environmental faculty at other universities when she came across the Cornell Arboretum Director, who started NatureRx at Cornell University. At Cornell, I had a focus on integrating nature into the prescriptions of the university's mental health services. At the same time, UConn experienced a loss of a student. Um, the idea that purposeful time outside could help students with mental health caused Cindy to feel like UConn needed to implement this program. We needed to connect nature and our mental health services. Um, there was nothing remotely similar to this at UConn, and she took it upon herself and was the initiator of Nature RX at UConn. Here, Nature RX has developed a lot since the onset of the pandemic. Cindy worked with a graduate student to map all the nearby trails in Yukon with GIS so anyone has easy access to the woods around the university. It is the place to go online if you want to go hiking in the forest or even go forest bathing. Its website has developed to be holistic and touched upon a variety of topics ranging from current research to student organizations, to faculty engagement. It also highlights many of the green spaces around campus that people may find relaxing. Um, but if anyone has ever been on the Facebook comments under a post about a big snowstorm, NBC Connecticut, I'm looking at you, uh, you know that strong people dislike winter. It's bleak, it's gray, 
Um, but Nature RX highlights and collaborates with the state of the art EEV greenhouses on campus that contain one of the most diverse plant collections in the United States. So it can be snowing and freezing outside, and there is still ample opportunity to connect with nature, be with a bunch of green plants and some super unique plants that many of us do not get to engage with. As it moves forward and progresses into this post-pandemic era, the question of Nature RX's future arises. Cindy is looking to institutionalize the organization so it has a good home on campus. Currently, it's simply a faculty and student conglomerate kind of floating in space. And hopefully, this will remediate funding issues that are common in academia and streamline communication between departments so Nature RX can really influence students, staff, faculty, and the Yukon community. In this time of climate anxiety, we are often told of climate doomism and the seemingly bleak future in front of us, and I think this narrative distances us from the earth. It makes our experience with nature feel fleeting, artificial. But Nature RX is healing people's understanding of the environment, that if you listen to the forests, they can change and communicate just like you and me. Although there are certainly times in front of us that are scary, Nature RX is bringing the joy of nature to people. The pandemic truly really was a dark time. I will get goosebumps sometimes when I think too much about it, about the loneliness, the heaviness, the greenness. But out of it, personally, I developed a special relationship with nature, and it really heals my mental state. Thanks to the work of wonderful organizations and individuals like Nature RX and Cindy, people can connect with Earth, earth <laughs> much like we were intended to. Thank you.